Hello and welcome to Smash and Compare. In this episode, we'll be covering the world of Pokemon, or rather the little bit we get to see from the Pokeballs in Smash. So 73 out of 721 might seem like a little bit in comparison, but it's actually a lot to talk about. We're dividing this episode into. We'll be going through the Pokeball Pokemon in all four games in alphabetical order. And to start, we have Obama Snow. This abominable snowman uses the move Blizzard, which surrounds the Pokemon in an icy vortex and has a bit of a vacuum effect, allowing it to trap opponents. After doing this twice, Obama Snow will dash forward and use the move Ice Punch to freeze the nearest opponent, which happens 100% of the time instead of the 10% chance it has in the Pokemon titles. It'll actually do this routine twice, doubling the chances of it connecting. Each Blizzard will do 9%, which is a little low considering the move's attack power in the original game is 110. Ice Punch deals 15% with some knockback, making it difficult to recover if you fly off the stage. If all 6 hits manage to connect, it'll do 66% total. Out of all the Pokemon in Smash, it's the only one to use 2 moves upon being released. Now to our first legendary Pokemon, Arceus, the god of the Pokemon world. Though its attack may seem a bit underwhelming, Arceus will send out pulses using the move Gravity, which in the Pokemon games doesn't deal any damage and will instead send flying types and those with the ability Levitate to the ground, taking away their immunity from ground type attacks. It has a similar effect in Smash. If any characters are airborne, they'll be Meteor Smashed to the ground and, if there happens to be no ground below them, they'll be one hit KO'd. The only downside to this attack is that it doesn't affect characters on the ground, so you have to be strategic for Arceus to get the kill. Next we have Articuno, a beautiful legendary bird which only appeared in Melee. It's very rare to get, and for good reason. It uses the move Sheer Cold, which is a one-hit KO move in the Pokemon games. That's right, no matter what type the Pokemon was, this move killed as long as Articuno was a higher level than the target. In Smash, the attack will deal 25%, but the numbers are really just for show, because if a character gets caught in the radius, then they will be frozen and thrown up above the blast line. Beedrill only appeared in the original Super Smash Bros. When released, the bug Pokemon will fly off the screen just to return a few seconds later with 17 of its bros flying across the screen. They'll all use the move Take Down, a move that can only be learned through TM9 in the Generation 1 games, doing around 12% per B hit. This was possibly inspired by the episode Challenge of the Samurai from the Pokemon anime. In the episode, a swarm of Beedrill are seen attacking Ash and stealing his Metapod. When summoned, Blossom will use the move Sweet Set, get too close and you're out cold, which doesn't really make sense. See, the move Sweet Set in the Pokemon games lowers the evasion of all adjacent opponents. It does not, by any means, put the other Pokemon to sleep. It just makes it easier to hit them, which in a way it kind of does this in Smash. That's why Blossom's move is often referred to as Sleep Powder, even though Blossom's trophy information states it as Sweet Scent. Regardless, the move's range is small, but it can be incredibly useful if you force your opponent into it. In Melee, Blossom would remain on the stage for a very long time, a glitch they fixed in later games. The move never caused damage until Smash 4, where it does 3%. Again, this doesn't make sense because neither Sweet Scent nor Sleep Powder caused damage in the original games. Now it's time for Blastoise. Blastoise uses the move Hydro Pump, where it basically starts firing blasts of water from the cannons on its back. It moves back slightly with each blast of water, and it can actually fall off the stage. Each blast of water will push the opponent towards the side of the stage along with dealing moderate damage. It does 6% per hit in Smash 64 and 8% per hit in Melee. Bonsly is a Pokemon that some would consider a disappointment if it comes out of the Pokeball, but it's quite literally one of the heaviest hitters in the game. Upon release, Bonsly simply walks back and forth on the stage and will eventually disappear. However, should you pick up Bonsly, it becomes a dangerous weapon. When picked up, it behaves like a crate instead of a common item, only allowing you to throw it at a short distance. But should you successfully hit an opponent with Bonsly, it'll use the move Tackle and deal 30% damage and a ton of knockback. It even bounces around the ground and retains its hitbox. It's actually possible to KO with this Pokemon from 0% in only 2 hits. Only thing you have to watch out for when using Bonsly is opponents with reflectors, since this Pokemon is just like any other thrown item. You can only throw it about 3 times too before it disappears, so make it count. There's also a strange glitch in Brawl that puts Bonsly in the first 50 to 60 Pokeballs thrown. It wears off after a while, but why this happens is unknown. Now, Chansey is a difficult Pokemon to find in the original Pokemon games, but a rather common one to see in Smash. When released, she will use her signature move, Soft Boiled, which in Pokemon will allow her to heal herself in battle or others outside of battle as a field move. In Smash 64, she throws out up to 3 eggs that contain items. In Melee, she'll throw out up to 5 eggs and the eggs can also heal 7%. 
20%. In both games, there's a small chance that the eggs will contain an explosion doing around 22%, which makes little sense given the healing nature of the move. Charizard is the only Pokeball Pokemon to later become a playable character and one of five Pokemon to appear in all four games. As a Pokeball Pokemon, Charizard will use the move Flamethrower, a fire-type move that has a 10% chance of burning the target in the Pokemon games. It'll rotate its head left and right, damaging all opponents that come into contact with the flames, which can be reflected and absorbed, or Charizard itself. The flames do 6% per hit in 64 and 2% per hit in Melee. Touching Charizard deals about 16% in 64 and 20% in Melee. When Chespin is released, it'll send out a flurry of explosive seeds with the move Seed Bomb, a decently powerful move in Pokemon with 80 attack power and 100% accuracy. It'll perform this move about 5 times before disappearing, doing a max damage of around 110%. Its range isn't that great, making it easy to avoid and unlikely to hit more than once, maybe twice if you're lucky. Chikorita appears in Melee and Brawl, performing the move Razor Leaf. In the Pokemon games, this move would actually attack all adjacent foes, but in Smash, instead of attacking in all directions, Chikorita will only throw its sharp leaves in one direction. Though the move is short and easy to initially avoid, it's very good at trapping opponents with its constant quick hits. In Brawl, the move still deals slash damage instead of the newly introduced grass damage from the Pokemon trainer's arrival. Each hit does about 4% in Melee and 8% in Brawl. Clefairy uses one of the most complicated moves in the Pokemon games, Metronome. In the Pokemon games, the move randomly selects any move in the entire game besides a specific list of 40 or so moves that aren't applicable to the user. It's risky, but it can have devastating effects, and the same can be said here in Smash. In Smash 64, Clefairy can use any move from the other 12 Pokeball Pokemon, meaning that the damage output varies heavily, though the most humorous one to see is Clefairy performing Snorlax's Body Slam by far. However, when Clefairy returned in Melee, its attacks were changed slightly. Instead of being able to randomly select a move from the other Pokemon in the game, it has the ability to use one of four specific attacks, Gust, Fire Spin, Waterfall, and Self-Destruct. Self-Destruct is similar to that of Electrode's Explosion and has heavy knockback. It does 21%. Waterfall, arguably its best attack, summons multiple waterfalls with a large range that do extreme vertical knockback and will usually cause your opponent to star KO. It does around 18% per hit and about 54% total. Fire Spin simply sets the ground around Clefairy aflame but can be DI'd out of. It does around 2% per hit and 42% total. Gust will generate a whirlwind around Clefairy that can also be DI'd out of, unless a down throw is used inside in which will cause the opponents to freeze. It does 32%. Cyndaquil only appears in Melee and most would say it's for the best. The fire type Pokemon uses Flamethrower, which would be great if it works similarly to Charizard's attack, but unfortunately it doesn't. Cyndaquil hops into the air and flames burst from its back and only in one direction. The range is much shorter and it's one of three Pokemon that can be KO'd by items and attacks. Though the damage output is the same as Charizard at 2% per hit, it's nothing more than a weaker substitute. When Darkrai is released, it will use its signature move Dark Void. In the Pokemon games, Dark Void has 80% accuracy, which could explain why in Smash opponents trapped in the Void will awaken just to fall back asleep if at lower percents. This move constantly does damage to those trapped in it. This is due to Darkrai's signature Bad Dreams ability in the Pokemon titles, which takes one eighth of a sleeping opponent's HP in each turn. This move does about 35% if the character is trapped from the beginning of the move. The Dene's Discharge move isn't super flashy or effective. In the original games, Discharge is a pretty good move that has a 30% chance of paralyzing the opponent. In Smash, it has about a 30% chance of actually hitting your opponent. The Dene jumps in the air and rotates an X of electricity counterclockwise around itself. The attack does multiple hits with the final hit having medium knockback. It's rather similar to Robin's Arc Thunder projectile upon hitting a target, but the electricity is simply spinning instead. The move has the ability to pass through platforms but lacks range and is easy to avoid. In the end, it does about 29% total. Deoxys was one of many legendary Pokemon introduced in Brawl and probably one of the strongest. Deoxys will use the move Hyper Beam, which in the Pokemon games is a very powerful move that requires a turn after to recharge and it's the last move that Deoxys can learn from leveling up. This psychic type Pokemon will fly upwards upon release, meteor smashing anyone that touches it. Once at the top of the screen, it will shoot out a huge blast of energy downwards in a straight line. The move is a multi-hitting attack at first, which is nearly impossible to DI out of, but then beam narrows and becomes a one-hit KO. In Smash 4, the one-hit KO feature was removed, making the attack a little less intimidating and not nearly as satisfying when you actually manage to hit your opponent with it. This attack does around 38% in both games. As a side note, Deoxys appears in both games in its attack form, one of four forms that can only be obtained from it being present in a specific Gen 3 title, but now it can be changed at will in the newer generations. Like many other Pokemon in Smash, Eevee will use the move Takedown when summoned. 
It'll look around before jumping a short distance and hitting the player, giving said player plenty of time to get out of the way. This Pokemon is more of a nuisance than anything else. If Eevee can manage to hit the player every time, it'll do around 40%. Electrode is a Pokeball Pokemon, in more ways than one. It uses the move Self-Destruct slash Explosion, where it essentially becomes a ticking time bomb. In Melee, Electrode grows dark before exploding and possibly KOing characters in its blast range, even at low percentages. It can even be picked up and thrown at other players, but it can hurt its summoner. In Brawl, Electrode again kept the same function, but it now has a chance to not explode and simply disappear with a very sad look on its face. Or it pretends to fail just to explode a few seconds later. In Smash 4, nothing changes except for the fact that it's the only Pokeball Pokemon who can one-hit KO. It does 30% in Melee in Smash 4, and 45% in Brawl. Our next Legendary is Entei, and its rarity is made up for with its sheer power. It uses the move Fire Spin, but its version of the move is much more threatening than Clefairy's. Upon release, a tall column of fire will encircle the beast and will pull characters towards the top of the screen if they get caught in the multi-hitting attack. It can be DI'd out of, which makes it less effective. In the Pokemon games, it was also a trapping move, damaging an opponent for 2-5 turns and preventing them from attacking during that time. In Brawl, they added more to its entrance animation, having it stand up on its hind legs and roaring. This attack can almost be seen as a more powerful version of Ho-Oh with less range, and table deal 72% in Melee, Brawl, and Smash 4 if all hits connect. Just like Chespin, Finnekin was brought to Smash 4 with the recent inclusion of Greninja onto the roster. It will use the move Incinerate, a move that Finnekin can only learn through TM59 in the Pokemon titles. It shoots a small ember that turns into a pillar of flames upon impact before turning around and doing it in the other direction. The distance of each shot varies slightly as Finnekin continues to go back and forth. The attack looks very similar to Ness and Lucas's S special, PK Fire. If each hit connects, then Finnekin has a chance to deal up to 148% of damage. Fletchling is a slightly faster Eevee that can't fall off the stage no matter how much you might wish it. When released, it'll randomly select one of the characters on the screen, excluding the summoner. Fletchling will then repeatedly use the move Peck, the weakest flying-type move in Pokémon with a base power of 35. The move inflicts minimal damage and knockback, but can deal up to 88% if all hits connect. Good luck with that. Next up is Guard of War. This elegant Pokemon will use the move Reflect and walk back and forth across the stage with a large sparkling circle around it for about 15 seconds. This circle does no damage and instead reflects any and all projectiles thrown by opponents, both from within and outside the circle. This is the strongest reflector in the games, as it doubles the speed, damage, and knockback of the projectile, which makes sense given Gardevoir's need to protect its trainer at all costs, even forming a black hole around themselves if necessary. It can't for some strange reason reflect hotheads, but it can detonate snakes down Smash. This move is rather confusing, as there is no equivalent to it in the Pokemon games. Reflect does exist as a move, but it reflects double the damage dealt to the user. The move Magic Coat can bounce back status moves, and Gardevoir can learn through Move Tutor, but only after Brawl's release. It might be a reference to the ability Synchronize, an ability that passes Poison, Paralyze, or Burn to the Pokémon that inflicted it. Genesect will jump around and use its signature move Techno Blast. It'll fire two small, weak bursts from its cannon before firing off a much bigger, stronger blast that has infinite range. It'll repeat this pattern twice, but it won't turn around if the enemy is behind them. In the Pokemon titles, the move Technoblast can be changed depending on which one of the four drives Genesect is holding. Each drive changes the color of the drive holder on its cannon, and it's because of this that we can tell that Genesect and Smash isn't holding a drive. If all hits connect, then Genesect will deal around 124%. Garatina, the first ghost type to come out of a Pokeball in Smash, is perhaps one of the strongest Pokemon in Smash 4. When summoned, the Renegade Pokemon will unleash the move Dragon Breath, three large vortexes that carry enemies away. In the Pokemon titles, Dragon Breath has a 30% chance of paralyzing the target, which probably explains its ability to trap opponents in the air. This move does 2% per hit and 12% if they touch Garatina's body. Now, damage-wise, that might not seem all that impressive or intimidating, but be wary. This move can easily take you right off the screen, and unlike Genesect, Giratina will turn around if no enemies are in front of it. So if you're not an airborne-friendly character, it could be a real challenge to not get hit or sent past the blast line. The Mount Pokemon, Go-Go, is well-deserving of its name. Introduced in Smash 4, Go-Go will charge back and forth across the stage, plowing through any opponents in its way using the move Takedown. What sets this Pokémon apart from others who use the same attack is that you or any of your opponents can actually ride Go-Go around the stage. This is a tribute to Pokémon X and Y. There were several spots where you could ride certain Pokémon, one of these being Go-Go. 
This feature transforms this Pokemon into a rolling crate, but it can get stunned if it runs into a wall, so make sure to get off in time. Go Goat will deal 15% per hit to anyone it runs into. Now in Smash, most Pokemon are quite useful in one way or another. A distraction. An annoyance. A possible final blow. But none are quite as fabulous as our pal, Goldeen. This is another one of the five Pokemon to appear in every game, and man do we wish that it wasn't. When summoned, Goldeen will deal no damage, it gives no effects to the players, and will simply use the move Splash, a move in Pokemon that is famous for literally having no effect, and probably more famous known as Magikarp's signature move, making many questions why the makers of Smash didn't use Magikarp instead. Though this Pokemon is irritating to get, it's actually good for balance. It keeps the Pokemon a gambling item with some luck involved. Goldeen does the same thing in each game, but in Brawl, if Goldeen falls in the water, it'll swim away rather than poof. So, I guess that's something. Next up is Groudon, one of the least effective legendary Pokemon in Smash. Though the Pokemon is huge and hard to avoid when it first appears, it deals little damage and knockback, and lacks the ability to one-hit KO until high percents. Groudon uses the move Overheat, which in the Pokemon games was a very powerful move and could only be learned by Groudon with TM50. Groudon's size does allow for some rather humorous glitches when spawned in small areas, mostly found in custom maps. But besides the cheap laughs, it only does 10-15% to per hit. Gulpin was a Pokemon that only appeared in Brawl, which is a true shame given its uniqueness. Gulpin will remain stationary when released, waiting patiently for an opponent to get close. When one does, it'll open its huge mouth and swallow them whole. It'll keep them there for a few seconds, continuously damaging them with its stomach acid that can apparently digest anything according to its Pokedex entry. Opponents can get out sooner with some button mashing, but while they're trapped, the Summoner of Gulpin can attack them freely by attacking the stomach Pokemon, making it easier to double or triple the damage Gulpin would deal on its own. The move it uses is Swallow, though in the Pokemon titles, this move fails unless the move Stockpile is used before it. The number of times Stockpile is used affects how much HP Gulpin will get. This might explain why Gulpin remains stationary and doesn't approach opponents. This Pokemon will deal around 22% plus whatever damage the player deals. Next is our only fighting type Pokemon to appear in Super Smash Bros, Hitmonlee. It was introduced in the original Smash Bros and was later replaced by Caesar, though many would say that Hitmonlee's accuracy is better. When summoned, Hitmonlee will use what used to be its signature move, Jump Kick. It has heavy knockback and can star KO around 70%. It only uses this attack once before falling off the edge, or in some cases, straight through the stage, and there's actually a reason for this. In the Pokemon titles, if this attack misses, then Hitmonlee will go flying and take crash damage, which was 1 HP in the first gen, but later changed to half its HP in gen 5. Drastic. If this attack connects, then it'll deal about 24%. Ho-Oh, a legendary Pokemon from Pokemon Gold, attacks very similarly to Entei. When released from its Pokeball, it'll soar high up and off the screen before coming back down and summoning a column of fire with the move Sacred Fire. In the Pokemon titles, Sacred Fire was a signature move of Ho-Oh until Gen 6, and had a 50% chance of burning the target, which might explain this move's ability to trap opponents. In Melee, it had the longest delay for a Pokemon to attack at 7 seconds. This unfortunately makes it very predictable and easy to avoid as the attack will appear whenever Ho-Oh is released. In Brawl, it was buffed a bit, expanding the range of the move and giving it a vacuum towards its center. This means that if the attack happens towards the edge of the stage, it can actually suck down and meteor smash opponents who touch it. Touching Ho-Oh deals 13% in both games, where the move itself will deal up to 125% in Melee and 80% in Brawl. Though a very unique Pokemon, Inkei's attack is very simple. It will headbutt the ground several times using the move Topsy-Turvy, a move that reverses stat changes in Pokemon but has a different effect here in Smash. The move will cause all grounded players to flip upside down, or rather, it'll trip them. This move was most likely chosen for NK as a reference to how you evolve this Pokemon by holding the 3DS upside down when it's leveling up. This move can deal up to 25%. Keldeo's secret sword attack is incredibly effective. Keldeo will chase opponents across the screen and slash at them with its horn, making it difficult to run away from. It has amazing range, is a powerful attack, and it has the ability to levitate in the air in order to catch airborne opponents. In the Pokemon games, Keldeo actually has two forms. The one we see in Smash 4 is his resolute form, which can only turn into it if it knows the move Secret Sword. Keldeo will not spawn in jungle hijinks, probably due to the stage's complex mechanics. Each slash does about 15-18% for a total of around 198% if all hits connect. Coughing will release gas from its pores using the move Smog. This attack deals only 3% per hit, but has the ability to trap opponents that get too close. In Pokemon, Smog is a very weak move, but has a 40% chance to poison the target, which might explain its ability to trap opponents in Smash. 
Kyogre, often seen as the opposite to Groudon, is a legendary Pokemon that appeared in Brawl and Smash 4. It'll use Hydro Pump, like Blastoise, but instead of dealing damage, these bursts of water have the ability to push opponents far off the stage and interrupt recoveries. Touching its body will deal about 6% damage, but it hardly matters when Kyogre will usually one-hit KO with its water anyway. In Smash 4, the move was buffed even more, allowing Kyogre to move faster and stay on the stage longer. Kyogre is easily in the running for the strongest Pokemon in Smash 4, and will likely cost you a stock if your opponent gets it. Though it's curious to note that Groudon did not make a return with Kyogre, which is strange given that the reboots of Sapphire and Ruby were released on the same day as Smash 4. And our last Pokemon of this episode is Kyurem. Upon being summoned, Kyurem will use the move Icy Wind, as stated in its trophy information. Though some will debate that Kyurem is actually using the move Glaciate, a more powerful version of Icy Wind in Kyurem's signature move, regardless, the Dragon Slash Ipe type legendary will release huge gusts of wind on either side. These winds will deal constant damage, and even though they won't carry you off the stage like Giratina's Dragon Breath, they'll freeze the opponent at the end of the move, leaving them vulnerable should they fall off the side of the stage. What's strange is that neither Icy Wind nor Glaciate have any chance of freezing the target in the Pokemon games, leaving us wondering why it does so in Smash. Did you know that Smash Compare has a Twitter and an Instagram page? That's right, we post pictures, Smash facts, polls, and updates on the show, so make sure to follow both. Smash a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have an awesome day.